Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. Today, we talk about if it's still worth it to start learning native Android today. So you may either be a beginner in software development or you maybe come from a different field and you're now interested in native Android. So is it still worth it to learn that with the current trends, with cross-platform, web development, taking a look at the job market in general? That's what we'll talk about right now. And I really want to make this video as unbiased as possible because my channel is mostly about native Android development. So if that's something you're into, then of course, feel free to follow. But I actually wouldn't recommend it to anyone at any time. So that's what comes in this video. So first of all, if you're thinking about learning native Android nowadays, you just need to be aware that native Android is a niche technology. So I did some research. There are currently around 5 to 6 million Android developers worldwide versus, for example, 27 million web developers. So there are roughly five to six times as many web developers as there are Android developers in the world, which obviously makes sense because way more businesses need an actual website than a real app, and especially not a native app. And if you're learning a more niche technology like native Android, then that always means less demand. On the other hand, it also means less competition. Makes sense because if there are only 5 million Android developers, you only compete with 5 million Android developers and not with, for example, 27 million web developers. But what's really important to understand is that less demand does not mean there is no demand or that the demand is shrinking. Because I feel like this is really a type of thinking people have that, okay, there's more demand from websites than there is for Android app. So it doesn't make sense to build Android apps. And this type of thinking is, of course, wrong, because I always bring that example that there are way more cars needed on the planet than trucks, for example. But just because of the fact that there are more cars being needed does not mean that we don't need any trucks. So that's already learning number one. Don't choose your field purely based on demand. However, we need to be fair that the job market currently is a bit more welcoming for web developers. And I mostly compare Android here to web developers because that's just the, the biggest portion of developers. But of course, there, there are more fields you could dive into. So native Android does have quite some open positions, but many of them are currently for senior roles. So it's not a really welcoming market for new native Android junior developers. Why is that? Well, I see there are multiple different reasons. Reason number one is that just cross-platform technologies like Flutter or Kotlin multi-platform these just allow you to build two apps with one team. So experts in native development, so just native iOS or native Android, are still needed, for example, for performance-critical apps, for very large code bases, for hardware-heavy apps. But in order to be good at that, someone needs experience. A junior native Android developer is just likely not in the position to really contribute well to these problems, but they can contribute to building an app with basic features, for example, which is often done with cross-platform instead. So you won't be able to just watch a native Android crash course and then uh, someone could take you, put you in a big code base and you spot all those performance bottlenecks. No, that actually requires experience. But on the other hand, if someone says, okay, we just need to build a simple two, three, four screen app with a database maybe talking to an API, then these are pretty basic things you can learn fairly quickly and therefore there is, there is a, a place for junior developers when learning cross-platform and building these rather small apps. Because for these small apps that are just very data-driven, talk to an API, database and that kind of stuff, for these types of apps, it often makes a lot more sense for a business to actually build these with a cross-platform framework. And reason number two why I think that there is currently more demand in native Android for senior developers is that there are just a lot of existing large code bases that need to be maintained. And maintaining a large code base with understanding all of its architecture, all of the module relations, that's often also more something like a mid-level to senior task. It's simply something that beginners or junior developers would quickly be overwhelmed with. In order to really give you a good suggestion, we first of all need to distinguish what your goal actually is. Because if you now want to learn development general or native Android specifically, then I see four goals as being possible. Number one, you want to just become a hobbyist developer. You just do it for fun. You don't really want to work for a company. You don't really want to publish your own apps and make money with that. Goal number two is you would like to become an indie app developer. So you want to just build your own apps, publish these, maybe add some kind of subscription and in the end earn money with that as an independent developer. Goal number three is you want to find work as a developer, not specifically as a native developer, but you just care about finding work as a software developer. And goal number four that we will talk about is you want to find work specifically as a native Android developer because it's just your passion. Because you've maybe tried out other fields, then you've tried Android and it just, it's just much more enjoyable to you than web development, than backend development, data science and all these other fields. So let's go through all these four goals and I will give you my recommendation on what I would do if I were you. If you just want to code for a hobby, you want to learn native Android because you just want to build native Android apps as a hobby, then this one is pretty easy. Focus 100% on what you enjoy the most. 
just learn native Android development in that case. Because in that case, you don't really need to let market trends restrict you if you're mainly looking for fun. If you, however, want to become an indie app developer and you want to publish your own apps, we need to talk a bit more about that. So first of all, if you seriously want to publish software on your own, I would not focus too much on just native, but rather make a cross-platform technology your main technology. So either Kotlin multi-platform, which is very close to Android development, by the way, or something like Flutter, maybe React Native. I'm not a big fan of React Native, um, but I see the, the two most viable cross-platform technologies right now are Kotlin multi-platform and Compose multi-platform or Flutter. But otherwise, if you actually want to publish your own kind of app, you would need to learn two quite different technologies to bring out an app for both platforms. And maybe you've heard about that iOS users are typically willing to pay more, so it's not really an option to not build an iOS app at all. You typically need two apps if you really want to make money or build a business around an app. And if you now want to learn native Android and native iOS, which are quite different, so different programming language, different operating system features, then you're just trying to chase two rabbits at once, which means you likely won't catch any of them. Or in other words, you might bring out two not so good apps. And something that is worth to add, if you just want to be an indie developer, but it doesn't matter to you if that means building an app or a web tool, I would honestly go for building a web tool. Because as an indie app developer, so building Android and or iOS apps, you will give away a lot of power over your business to companies like Google and Apple. And if you run a business, I would always make sure that it does not have a single point of failure, where your entire cash flow can be destroyed because of one single factor, because of one of these companies not approving your app or deleting your app from the store. With a web tool, however, you are your own boss. You can decide when you push an update without having to ask someone to approve it. And especially with the recent trends about these app stores, it, it really became a pain to publish an app. I've heard so many stories of indie developers getting their account banned, being frustrated because Google Play now requires you to have 10 or 20 testers of your app before you can publish it, which is crazy. Apple is also pretty restrictive, and especially if you publish an app for iOS and Android, you have to deal with both these doors. And just Google Play is already a pain. On the other hand, if you say app development is your passion, you just don't like web development, maybe you've tried it, then please go for app development. So if you really enjoy this in particular, you will find a way that works for you. You will put in more effort to just comply with what, what the App Store wants. So your app has a lower chance of uh, randomly being removed. So in this case, I would clearly say that passion beats these rational disadvantages. But let's get to goal number three, and that is you just want to find work as a developer. Not specifically as a native Android developer. So if you would get work as a native Android developer, you would take it. But you would also take work as a web developer or just something else. So if you just like development in general, but it doesn't matter to you if that's a native or something else, I would probably not go the native Android path. Because as I said, native Android nowadays is still very much in demand for these niche problems. There are lots of apps that are existing, lots of companies having big performance problems, uh, having apps that interact a lot with the device's hardware, where you have really large code bases to maintain. These problems do exist and they will keep on existing in future as well. So the demand will stay there. But as I said, being able to help with these problems well requires a lot of Android-specific knowledge. And if you don't yet have any of that, you will have a faster and easier start of your career by just learning something where less experienced developers can also have a good contribution, like web development, for example, or cross-platform. And again, if you say you, you still like native Android, but this is also a big thing for you that you really want to find work, then why not take a look at Kotlin Multiplatform? There are really more and more job positions that are opening for this technology, and it's really close to Android development. So you work with the same programming language, uh, you work with the same UI framework nowadays as well with uh, Jetpack Compose. And really, I would say 80% of a code base is pretty platform independent with Kotlin Multiplatform. And here and there, you will still have to do with native. Sometimes you need to write certain functionality that is only relevant for native Android because an API works just a bit differently there. Sometimes you do this for iOS. So you still have a little bit to do with these native platforms, but most of your code um, is really just about sharing the same type of logic, uh, interacting with the same database, interacting with the same API, having the same looks in your UI, um, and, and then you can just perfectly make use of Flutter, Kotlin multi-platform. And for that, it will also be easier to find work if you're not that experienced yet. But what if you now say, hey, Philip, I am so excited about native Android, about Android as an operating system. I just love it. I've tried out so many other technologies maybe, but I always keep on coming back to Android. And then I can clearly say, if you say that you love Android as a platform, you love diving into how everything works under the hood because it's all so interesting to you and focus on native. You will really regret choosing a different career path if your heart actually beats for native Android development. And if you're really passionate about native Android development, you will find a way that works for you to get a well-paid job as well. Because as I said, 
passion beats rational disadvantages. However, I would probably still have one backup technology in your pocket on which you maybe focus 20% of your time. So typical Pareto principle, 80% native Android, 80% focusing on what you really want to get good at, and 20% on some kind of backup technology. Ideally, this backup technology could be a technology that is different, but strongly relates to native Android. So again, cross-platform would be a very close technology you could get into, or alternatively, something like backend development, for example. Every single Android app, not every single Android app, but most Android apps actually need to interact with some kind of server. So it will also help you a lot to actually understand the server-based backend development, because this, again, will make you a better Android developer since you need to interact with a server so often. So I would really just get a basic understanding for something else like Flutter, Kotlin Multiplatform, um, a server-based framework. For example, Spring Boot is a perfect backend framework that you can learn if you're a Kotlin developer, if you, if you like native Android, because Spring Boot is a very established backend framework you can also spend time for um, if you know Kotlin, because it's Java-based, but everything that is Java-based, we can also um, write Kotlin code in. Alternatively, Ktor would also be a backend framework that is purely Kotlin-based, so where the framework itself was also built with Kotlin, but Ktor itself is not that established on the market yet, and I think it will take a long while until it will be, if it will be. So for serious backend development, if you're really looking for a job or use this as a backup technology, um, I would rather stick to Spring Boot if you're a native Android developer and you already know Java or Kotlin. But again, I want to be clear that if you're picking this path of becoming a native Android developer as your, as your main thing, then you will have to do more than in other fields in order to get a good job. So this might mean that you have to build a great portfolio of really, really well-built Android apps with good design to show off what you know. My mobile dev campus helps with that. You could mock ups, all that stuff, link below. But if you pick this path of becoming a native Android developer, go with the extra mile. Do more than others, learn more than others, invest more in yourself than others, build better apps than others. And if you do that, you will have a very bright future as a native Android developer even nowadays. Because I personally went exactly that same path. I just love Android development. I like Kotlin as a language and Android is just the main platform for which we can use Kotlin as a language. I just like building things you always have in your pocket. I like interacting with all those uh, mobile device specific hardware like a sensor, GPS, uh, internet, Wi-Fi, because lots of these you don't encounter in your in, in backend development or maybe in desktop development. And I just really like working with that. Android is my passion. I love it. And I also find clients who, who need my native Android expertise. But from my experience, I can really say that if someone approaches me and says, Philip, I, I need your help in native Android, then it's typically around these problems that I mentioned. So, hey, um, I have Compose code and uh, the performance is bad. I have a performance problem somewhere else in the app. We have a big code base. Um, can you help us with the architecture? And it's rather rarely the case that someone approaches me and says, Philip, um, I have an idea for an app. You need to build it from scratch to, to really finish it and publish it all in native Android. That does happen, but not very often. So if you say you like Android as much as I do, then please, please focus on that follow your passion in that case, and you will find a way to make this work for you. And if that's actually your pick, then I actually have a new course for you, which launches on Sunday in a few days. It's about Android internals, but all in a practical way that is extremely useful in the real world as a native Android developer. So in that upcoming Android internals course, you will learn about the OS system architecture, about how activities work under the hood, um, IPC, so inter-process communication, memory management, view model internals, all these Android-related things, how these work together under the hood, so you become a way better Android developer overall because you understand all those whys behind what you're doing, so understanding why certain things are the way they are. Launches on Sunday. Check my channel in case that's interesting for you. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you then back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.